Good afternoon, my name is Chris Skeen, and today I'm going to be talking about React server-side re rendering with React Router, Redux, and asynchronous data fetching. Uh, so first, what is server-side React? Essentially, it's React components rendered on the server and sent to the client as HTML. But what does that mean, and how is it done? So first, let's do a quick review of client-side React rendering. So what happens with client-side React rendering is a client makes a request to the server, the server responds with a mostly blank HTML file and a bundle.js file containing the application code. Once those files are fully loaded, the components can be rendered. Uh, at this time, you'll have optional async data fetching, usually in your component did mount, lifecycle event. And at that point, the user can view the loaded data and interact with the application. With server-side rendering, a client makes a request to the server the server renders components into HTML and responds with an HTML file containing both the rendered components and an initial store state if you're using Redux. Um, and it also responds with your bundle.js file containing the application code. Um, your page content is visible as the HTML loads, so you don't need to wait for the bundle.js to display content. So that's one of the advantages of server-side React. Um, your page will become interactive when the bundle.js loads uh, and runs, and so you're going to have a slight gap between the point at which you'll be able to view your HTML content and the point at which your application becomes interactive. Um, your initial state is then loaded from HTML, and from there, the app operates like a standard client-side React application where the navigation is handled by the client-side router and subsequent data requests are sent and received without reloading the entire client application. So some of the advantages of server-side React. Uh, the first one is search engine optimization. A lot of search engines uh, won't read your bundle.js when you serve it from your server. They will only see the blank HTML file that you're sending, so they won't be able to actually uh, index your page properly. However, Google does parse JavaScript, and apparently it does it very well. So if you're running a client-side application, you can at least count on Google to index your page properly. Another advantage, uh, which is a pretty big one, um, in certain contexts, is that your page content is visible more quickly. Um, and that's a really big measure of um, user satisfaction with applications and application performance. Uh, it helps really the perceived performance of the application. Um, your application won't be functional until your JavaScript loads, though, so you want to kind of take into account your use cases and how your app might be used. Some of the disadvantages of server-side React um, are increased application complexity. Um, the server only renders components once, so you've got to actually do things a little bit differently on the server than you do in the client. Um, so you don't have access to certain lifecycle events like component and mount. Um, which means that you have to do asynchronous data fetching before calling render to string, which is what renders your components on the server. Uh, so that can increase development time. Another disadvantage of server-side React is increased server load, um, which uh, can be a problem because render to string is a synchronous method, so it can actually significantly slow down your server. That said, uh, React 16's uh, solving that problem with a render to node stream method that runs asynchronously. So right now what I want to do is a little live demo of a server-side React application and do some code walkthroughs to show you how to implement the application. So I've built this little application that uh, does a few things with server-side React. And the first two routes I want to look at are a client-side React route and then a server-side React route for the home page. So with the client-side React route, you'll notice when this page is hard refreshed and I come down to the network tab, you see what you expect to see, which is a blank HTML file. There's no content there. However, when I come to the server-side React uh, route and refresh the page, you'll see that the HTML that we received from the server is being populated with data. And this data includes, most importantly for search engine optimization, uh, it contains the text that you're uh, seeing on the page. So the server. Um, so uh, the search engine can read the information that's coming from your server, which is a big advantage. Uh, another advantage, I'm going to turn on throttling here. So we'll go to fast 3G, and I'm going to hard refresh this page. You'll notice that the, uh, with server-side React rendering, the page is visible right away, even as our bundled uh, JS file continues to load. That's not the case with our client-side React. Uh, when this page loads, 
you're going to see a blank screen for quite some time until the uh, front end JavaScript file is completely loaded, at which time your components mount and render. So you can uh, get a very big performance um, improvement, particularly with slow connections. So let's, uh, let's see what that code looks like. It's pretty simple. When your get request comes into your server, you simply call this render to string method and pass it your server application file. Um, you then set that equal to a variable and all you do is you pass that variable into your HTML file and just insert this HTML as, as text into your HTML file and send it back to the client. So kind of the basic implementation of server-side React is pretty simple. Let's take a look at routing next. So one of the nice things about server-side React, and I'm going to do a hard refresh on our server-side React homepage, is that our information comes down from the server um, with our HTML filled out. But once we go to additional pages, uh, we don't make additional server requests. So you still capture the benefits of having client-side rendering. Um, when you're using server-side React. I'm going to do a hard refresh on this about page, however, and you'll notice that the content for this about page comes in. So it, it doesn't really matter um, on what page your uh, application is initially requested. You get the uh, appropriate information for that page. And so uh, let's look at the code for that. Um, React Router version 4 makes it relatively easy. I have a component here called shared routes which is being passed into both the client application and the server application. So we'll come down here to the server application, and you'll see that we're using this thing called a static router, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a router that doesn't accept clicks from a user. And then we're passing in our shared routes component. Uh, our shared routes component is just standard React router um, where you have paths and components being rendered. Our client application is basically unchanged at this point. So let's look at Redux. Redux is a little bit trickier. You may have noticed as this uh, application is being loaded, there is this script tag with this window.preloaded state global variable being set. And our state is coming in as JSON. Um, the way this is implemented is that when a get request comes into our server, we'll call this handle render function. And in this handle render function, we are creating a store. Um, we are then calling store get state to get our store's current state, and we're setting it equal to a variable. Um, we're calling render to string, as we always have before, except this time we're wrapping our component in a provider tag and passing in the store. That's standard Redux still, and this is, this is what's happening on the server. Um, we are then sending down an HTML file that has both the rendered React components and a script tag with our state um, turned into JSON. On the client side, we are capturing our, our preloaded state in a variable. And then this is just a, a garbage collection step where we delete the global variable that's set on the window. And then we create our store and we pass in the preloaded state that we grabbed off of window.preloaded state. So when we create our store on the client side, um, we, are, we actually have an initial state that exists right when the um, application begins uh, to function. So what that looks like, and I'm going to come over here to this uh, server-side React state tab and refresh the page. You'll notice again we've got uh, this window.preloaded state information coming in. And I've uh, got logging set up on our console, so I'm going to just go ahead and type an exclamation mark here. And you'll notice that in our uh, previous state, and I'll zoom in, we have the first state of our application being this is the default state, and then the next state being this is the default state with an exclamation point. Uh, the final thing I want to talk about real quick is asynchronous data fetching. This is where React server-side gets much more complicated. Here's a really simple example. Uh, and you may want to reorganize this if, uh, if you're actually implementing this in a true app. But when we're, our request comes into our server, we call this uh, function called async fetch. And what this does is we create our store. Um, and then we're checking the route uh, on, our, on our request. And if it matches any particular route that we're looking for, 
we want to go and dispatch our asynchronous um, Redux thunk. And at that point, once that thunk has returned with information, we then call handle render, which passes in our store and our uh, rendered React component to our HTML. Um, one other thing that you can do on the client side is uh, you uh, want to um, not refetch that data if, you're, uh, if you already have information. Um, and uh, you want to fetch that data if it doesn't exist. And so let me give you a little uh, demo of what, that, what I'm talking about here. You'll see when I click on this SSR async from a previously loaded page, uh, we want to fetch this data from the server. So you see a network request go out. Uh, and you see in our console log, we've got uh, our fetch data is running. We're fetching our data, and we're setting our async state. Um, if we refresh on this page, we've got our existing state detected, and it's not refreshing data because we actually don't need to make that request since the information is already coming down from our asynchronous uh, request right there. So that's an overview of React server-side rendering. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and thanks so much for listening.